You will have grace to go forth to service and to defeat evil among your fellow man. The title of this article was When Hell is Released, What Can the Church Do? So I want to preach a message I've titled tonight, Praying with Power. Praying with Power, 1 Samuel 12, just one verse of Scripture, verse 23. Moreover, as for me, far be it for me, that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. But I will teach you the good and the right way, praying with power. Father, thank you for the anointing tonight to destroy this yoke. On this Sunday night, I'm asking God you would break in to this service. Without you, we can do nothing. We are totally dependent. It's not by might nor by power, but it's by your Spirit. Have right of way in this place tonight, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now, it's been said before, and I want to repeat it again. It bears repeating. Some prayer, some power, more prayer, more power, much prayer, much power. Now, the question is tonight, how much of God's power do you really want? You determine that through your prayer life. Because the only way to get in touch with the power of heaven is through Jesus Christ. He is tonight the source of all power. Now they're screaming all over America, white power, black power, nuclear power, red power, but I'm here to talk to you about Holy Ghost power. And there's no shortage. You know, mobile may run out of gas. They've been talking now about food shortages in America because of the pandemic. Of course, they fan the flame of panic any chance that they get so that we'll live in fear. And when you live in fear, how many know tonight that your immune system will break down when you're fearful? They know exactly what they're doing. It's a strategy of the devil. But I'm here to tell you tonight that there is no power shortage in heaven. He is the source of all power, and God is no respecter of persons. Now, I'm reading about Abraham again, and it's an amazing story that he prayed that God would give him a son when he was far past the age of giving birth to a son. And God gave him a son. This is scientifically, this is biologically impossible. He's 100 years old. His wife is 90 years old. And God said, you're going to have a baby. Moses prayed for the Red Sea to part, for the water to gush out of a rock, and God gave him water. You can read this story. It's an incredible story of God's provision. You'll find it recorded again in the book of Psalms, chapter 78, about God's answer to prayer. You can read about Joshua. Incredible stories in the Bible, how that he prayed for the Son to stand still, and the sun and the moon stood still for almost 24 hours. Now, that is an awesome demonstration of God's power and answer to prayer. So, I want to ask you tonight, do you want to stop time in history? Start praying. You want more power tonight? Could I tell you, learn to pray. Notice our text tonight, moreover, as for me, far be it for me that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. I want to consider with you, first of all, tonight, the master's way. Jesus never taught his disciples to teach. You'll be hard taxed to find anywhere in the gospel where Jesus is teaching his disciples how to preach. He taught them, though, how to pray. In fact, the Bible says that the disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray. Now, if you, the simplest definition of teaching means there is a right way to do something, and there is a wrong way to do something. Why? Because when Jesus prayed, something happened 
And when the disciples prayed, nothing happened. Therefore, they wanted to know about the golden key. What is the golden key that will unlock tonight the gates of heaven? Many people do not get answers to their prayer because they pray amiss, according to the book of James. Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 7, Jesus says, when you pray, he didn't say if, he said when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do. In other words, he's meaning here prayer, a prayer over and over and over again from rote memory does not bring you an audience with God. You get an audience with God Almighty when you pray in the authority of Jesus' name. And I've come to tell you again tonight that there is power in the name of Jesus. Demons tremble at that name. In John 14, 14, if you ask anything, Jesus said, in my name, I will do it. Prayer is an awesome privilege. Mark 11, verse 22, Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God, or it really translates out, have the God kind of faith. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believe those things which he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, what, whatsoever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Now, it's very clear tonight that you can have as much or as little of God as you're willing to have through the awesome privilege of prayer. Now, I know tonight I'm preaching to the choir. Most of this is fundamental and elementary, but we need to go back to the fundamentals. I know this is the ABC of the gospel, but we need to pray. As Charles Spurgeon said, there are three keys to revival. Number one, prayer. Number two, prayer. And number three, prayer. Those are the three keys to revival. Let's look secondly this evening. What is prayer? Prayer is conversation with God. And the good news tonight is that you don't have to talk to God in a particular way. As a matter of fact, some of the best prayers that I've ever prayed in my life was, Help! You ever prayed that prayer? And it wasn't in a foreign language either. A Christian must get on his knees before he gets on his feet. One man wrote, it's time to get on your knees and fight like a man. Prayer is about getting you ready to do God's will. The Lord's prayer is not my will, but yours be done. Say that again with me. Not my will, but your will be done. Say it with me. Not my will, but yours be done. Say it again. Not my will, but yours be done. Prayer is the only way to release the supernatural power of God in your life. Your marriage, your business. It shows you great and mighty things. He said in the book of Jeremiah, call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you know not of. But I want to say this tonight in this Part of the message, as powerful as God is, and God is powerful, he cannot answer prayer until you pray. Isn't that deep? And that is as, as deep as I'm going to get tonight. Prayer is the key that unlocks the gates of heaven and closes the gates of hell. Prayer has the power to cure sickness and disease. Prayer can shatter the shackles of misery, habits that enslave you, that torments your son, that destroys your daughter, 
Prayer doesn't need proof. Prayer requires practice. And I want to say tonight that prayer is a weapon. And God has given you the weapon to wage war in the heavenlies. He said, whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever we loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. When we say bind and loose, what are we talking about? Paul said we're talking here about powers and principalities in the heavenlies. Or in other words, uh, they're the supernatural beings who are under the command of the devil. And the way that you overcome them is in the authority of Jesus' name. How many times I've seen sickness respond to Jesus' name. There's no special power in J-E-S-U-S. Within a six-block range of this building tonight, you'll find lots of Jesuses. I'm talking about the character that's behind that name. The devil's not afraid of a wooden cross. He's afraid of the one who hung on that cross. And there's only one remedy for man's sin tonight, and that's the precious blood of Jesus. When we don't know what to preach or what to pray, the one thing that we have going for us is the cross of Jesus Christ. And we've come tonight to enforce the claims of Calvary against the devil. Oh, I felt this all day long. That means tonight you can bind them from your family. You can bind them from your children. How many times in the past your kids, you pray for them before they go off to school and when they come back you have to lay hands on them and cast out anything that's gotten a hold of them during the day. You can bind them from your business. You can bind them from your future. If you want power tonight, you must learn to pray. So let's talk about why pray. And this is what I really wanted to preach. Because prayerlessness is sin. Now we don't consider it sin. This is not one, this is not one of the biggies we have on the list. You know, we have the big list of murder violence and all the other biggies blasphemy and covetousness and murder and all that but prayerlessness is considered in our text it is a sin moreover as for me far be it from me that i should sin against the lord in ceasing to pray for you a prayerless christian is a weak christian a prayerless church is a weak church. You know, we used to measure the spiritual thermometer of our churches was our prayer meetings. I was telling my wife, reminding her that I met Pastor Mitchell close and up front for the very first time in a prayer meeting. That had to be in the fall of 1978 in San Diego, California. That's where I met him. He was on his knees praying. He had his shoes off up against the wall. I thought, that must be the key, so I took my shoes off. I thought he was standing on holy ground or something. Come to find out later, he said, I, I, no, he said, I wasn't standing on holy ground. I just didn't want to bend up my shoes. A prayerless family is a divided and defeated family. Really, the bottom line is prayerlessness is pride. And it's the despising of the cross. When Jesus said, it is finished, the Bible said immediately the veil was rent in the temple. And access was made into the holy of holies by the precious blood of Jesus. And when we refuse to pray, we're despising the cross. And what we're telling God is, I can handle this on my own. Revelations 3.17 speaks of the final church. This is the last day backslidden church. For you say, I am rich. 
I have prospered, I need nothing, not realizing that you are wretched, you are pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. Now those are penetrating words right there. These are people who think that they can do it on their own. They are self-sufficient. And this is the real reason. When you boil it right down, the real reason why we don't pray is we think that we can handle it on our own. I was thinking about it today. You know, you go to Christian bookstores, and sometimes I go down to unbelief bookstore, I, I mean faith bookstore, and, and uh, And you'll be amazed how many books in that store are written about prayer. You go to the family, a Christian bookstore in the Phoenix Valley, you know, and there's books of, and we all know, we know that we all know the power of prayer. We know, we know about the plan of prayer. We know the pattern of prayer. We know the priority of prayer. We know the purpose of prayer, but we don't pray. Prayerlessness is a sin. John Hagee wrote these words. He said, the tragedy of our day is not unanswered prayer. The tragedy is unoffered prayer. And prayer will either make you turn away from sin or sin will make you turn away from praying. Why pray? Because anointed prayer rises above the need level. Are you with me? You know, we, we need to ask God for big things. Nothing is impossible. Do you believe tonight that God can defeat the giants in your life? When you have a big need, the Bible said, ask big. Ask him to send fire on your heart from heaven. Ask him to walk you through the fiery furnace because he's the God who cannot fail. You need to turn the power loose tonight in the authority of Jesus' name. I'm preaching in Indonesia many years ago and they brought a Chinese woman up to the altar I said, what's your problem? And immediately she goes into a trance. I said, whoops. I mean, the lights are on, but nobody's home. Her eyes are wide open. You could go like that and she's not blinking. I've been in some of the islands around Guam that they do the same thing. Hello, anybody in there? Huh? She immediately goes into a spiritual trance. And the people that brought her, they're totally freaked. I think it's her brother-in-law, sister-in-law there. They don't know what to do because they've never seen her do this. And I said, the blood of Jesus. And when I said that, she hit the ground. And she began to, like a snake. She went through the altar space and turned around and like a snake she's moving and I recognized it was one of the gods she had been worshiping and I said the name of Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus Christ is against you and you're going to come out and you must obey no response then I got angry and went into overdrive I said, you must obey. My elder brother defeated you 2,000 years ago, and you're going to come out right now. And she was instantaneously delivered. She came to every revival meeting I did all across Jakarta. She followed us around. You can ask my wife. She was in every meeting, got saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, delivered from demon powers. And I've come to tell you tonight, it's all because of that name that's above every name. His name is Jesus Christ, and there's power in that name to bring healing in your body. Oh, how many times I have seen this over the years in many nations around the world, that powerful name of Jesus. 
Mandaluyong, they brought this man to me. Morning prayer, Tuesday morning, I'm minding my own business, and he's in a spiritual trance. He's a young man. His mother's weeping. He's been like this for three days. He's not eating. Eyes wide open. I said, well, just set him right over here in the corner. She sat down with him, and I continued in my prayer meeting. It was Tuesday morning, right off of Lions Road, right there in Mandaluyong, and I prayed. I took dominion. God, what is this? And the Holy Ghost said to me, whispered in my ear, he's got something tied on the inside of his pants. I said, huh? Of course he's got something tied to the inside of his pants. It's his underwear. <laughs> so I asked to the mother, the interpreter said to her, he said to her, does he have something pinned to the inside of his pants? She said, yes, how did you know that? He had gone to a whack-whack. I love that name because that's what they are, a whack-whack, quack-quack. <laughs> they unpinned that thing. It was stuck on the inside of his pants. It was filled with bones and feathers, all kinds of fetishes. We took that thing out. I threw it on the ground and stomped on it. And when I did that, he snapped out of it. It's like he woke up and he asked him to God, look, he said, where am I? How did I get here? And I had him pray a simple prayer. The blood of Jesus Christ sets me free. And I had him pray in the name of Jesus. And he was gloriously and powerfully delivered on the spot in that Tuesday morning prayer meeting. One Sunday morning, I'm preaching, and a man came to the altar to get saved. Got up from the altar there in Lions Road and said, Pastor, and he told me through the interpreter, he said, I've killed seven men. <laughs> now, I want to go to heaven, but I'm in no real hurry. I, I'm rooting for the rapture. And he said, you think God could forgive somebody like me? And I began to talk to him about the thief on the cross and the horrible crimes that these men had committed in the Bible and how God forgave them. He said, I'm from a certain province and I've been running, running as a fugitive for years. But in that name, that wonderful name of Jesus Christ, he was gloriously delivered. And you should have heard that demon come out when it came out of him, that violent murdering demon came out of him. When he prayed the sinner's prayer, that thing came loose. It woke up three rows of prayer meeting. Everyone that was sleeping woke up that morning. I had the undivided attention. And God brought that and set that man free in church by the power of God. And I want to tell you, there's power in the name of Jesus tonight. Seven reasons, and I close. Seven reasons why God doesn't answer prayer. Number one, make sure that you pray to God out loud. One of my pet peeves is coming to prayer meeting, and no one, and there's groups of people, but no one's, you can't hear anybody praying. It's like they're praying the rosary in tongues. You don't meditate or visualize a prayer. You say a prayer. Listen, as powerful as God is, he's not going to answer you until you ask him in the authority of Jesus' name. Number two, ask in faith believing. Mark eleven twenty three. 23, for assuredly I say to you, whoever does not doubt in his heart but believes that the things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Number three, when you ask, ask big. Ask according to his infinite power. When you ask God for something, ask for more than you need. Number four, God does not answer prayer if we don't pray in the name of Jesus. Number five, ask according to his will. And how many know God's will is consistent with his word? You can know the will of God by reading God's word. First, John 5, 14. Now, this is the confidence that we have in him, 
that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears. Number six, very important, pray specifically. Don't pray in vague terms. Nail it down so that when God answers, you know it was him that answered the prayer. And finally, God will not hear your prayer with unconfessed sin in your life. Psalm 66 and verse 18, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. So what area of life are you under attack? Because there are people here tonight, your, your, your life is under attack. Finances, it could be relationships, it could be business, marriage, your children. In the authority of Jesus' name, I want you to start praying about that area that's being attacked and let God solve the problem for you tonight. No matter what you need today, listen to me. In the authority of Jesus' name and the power of his shed blood, you can get the answer to the issue of your life tonight. Prayer is powerful. And God is in the prayer answering business. You believe that tonight? Could we bow our heads together in the presence of the Lord? God is speaking to hearts all over this building. And I mean, the Bible spells it out so clearly. Prayerlessness is sin. It is sin not to pray. A generation that knows all the dynamics. They know the purpose. They know the power. They know all about the provision. They know all about the priority of prayer and the purpose of prayer, the pattern of prayer. But we do not propose to pray. That's the problem. God is dealing with you tonight. God is speaking to hearts. The war is first won in the heavenlies. And I want to say tonight that the intercession that's needed today is wrestling and open-ended agony. The devil must feel your determination to fight to the death. He must tremble at the thought that you've entered the war room and you're not going to come out of the prayer room until God the Father releases angels to the target or brings conviction upon the wicked. When hell is released, what can the church do? Well, I want to tell you what the church can do. They can do what they've always done in the past, and that's pray. You're here tonight, and you say, Pastor, I'm here tonight because of the direct result of somebody's praying. You're not right with God. You're not serving God. You're not living for God. You're bound by sin, by habit. You're living under that horrible load of guilt. You say, I need to get my heart right with God, Pastor. I want to get, I want to get saved tonight. Would you pray for me? Would you lift that hand up right where you're seated, unsaved? You're backslidden tonight. You're away from God. You lift that hand. We want to pray with you. I see this hand over here. Thank you. Honest hearts. How many others will lift your hand? I see this hand back here. How many others? Just lift that hand up. Hold it up just for a moment, then put it right back down. My heart is not right with God, Pastor. I'm not living for God. I see that hand. Thank you. I see this hand up here. Thank you. How many others will be honest? God has made a way for you through his son. Jesus Christ, your whole life can be changed tonight by the power of God. Every one of you that raised your hand, I want you to do one more thing. I want you to come out of your seat and come find a place to pray. If you raise your hand, just come right now. Come and find a place to pray. Maybe you raised your hand and I didn't see it. Maybe you didn't raise your hand, but God's dealing with you. I want you to slip into the nearest aisle and come down and find a place to pray at this altar as we sing it together. He paid a debt. He did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. Could we stand as we sing it while these are praying? He paid a debt he did not owe. 
thank you for that name that's above every name. That wonderful asset of the precious blood of sprinkling tonight. Access before your throne of grace. A brand new song. Christ Jesus. That I could never. We're going to sing that again. Your, your part of your life is under attack. And I mean tonight, the Holy Ghost put his finger right on the issue of your life. We have power in prayer. I believe tonight before you get out of this building, something's going to change. It's going to begin in you. You say tonight, I need a miracle in my life. I'm believing God. And you'll come and stand along this platform. You're, you're believing for something specific tonight. To receive anything specific, you have to ask specifically. We're going to turn you loose in just a minute. We're going to believe God for miracles right now. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Believe God with me. Would you pray this prayer? Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I specifically... I'm asking tonight that you would work a miracle in my finances, in my family, in my children, sons and daughters, those under attack. I come against confusion. I take dominion over the demonic. The blood of Jesus Christ is against it right now. Lord, thank you for the authority that's in that name over all disease, all pain and sickness in my body. Thank you, Father, for answered prayer tonight. Thank you for the miracle right now. Save my unsaved loved ones. Let revival begin in me. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, thank you for the prayers that are being answered in this altar tonight.